So let's look at how a standard delta Y transformer is wound and how current moves when it gets inside of it. Typically in a standard delta Y configuration on the Y side, phase A is wound down one leg of the core, B down another, C down another. This is a great configuration for 60 hertz current. But unfortunately, in today's environments where we have a lot of additional third harmonic currents and triplet current comes back to this transformer, the second A of the transformer, we see that it creates a magnetic field. We have the 60 hertz field and we're also going to have the 180 hertz field and the ninth harmonic and the 15th and so on. When this couples back to the primary, we will see that we have a much larger current than we would initially expect if we're just looking for 60 hertz amounts circulating inside of the primary. The HMT winding on the secondary is quite different. What we've been able to do is take half of phase A winding, wind it on one leg of the core, go over to the next leg of the core and wind the remainder of it in the opposite direction. We do the same thing with phase B, and we do the same thing with phase C, splitting up the windings on the different cores. What this allows us to do now is if we have currents that are in phase with each other, of course the third harmonics, look what happens. We have the third harmonic from A, now opposing the third harmonic in C when this core gets energized because these are typically in phase with each other. That means that these opposing magnetic fields are quite small because they're in opposition to each other. These opposing magnetic fields then are not large enough to couple over to the primary. What I would like to do now is to say the same thing that I just mentioned but show a different type of method of looking at it. If we take measurements on the secondary and primary of the transformer, we will now be able to see the spectrum breakdown and how harmonics are moving throughout a system. If we take measurements on the secondary side of the transformer, we will see the loads are drawing as we expected. Large fundamental, large third, fifth, and seventh, and so on. When that comes back to the transformer, we can see inside of the delta, if we take measurements, the same type of spectrum. Again, Maxwell's magnetic equations work forwards and backwards in the transformer. What's interesting to note, of course, is what's leaving this transformer, i.e. what's on the primary side of this transformer. If you look real close, you will see that the third harmonic current and the ninth and the fifteenth are now missing. What this means is that the third harmonic is, is staying localized inside of the primary of the transformer. Remember the third harmonic was a very large current, so that means that we're having a large amount of current inside of the delta winding of a transformer, which causes wasted heat and a lot of energy. If we look closely at this energy, it's measured in watts. If we look at our power bill, we know that we're paying for watts. So this represents a large amount of energy that's being wasted inside of this transformer just to heat the room up. And of course, the other impact that it has on the performance of the transformer, we can see pretty clearly. This transformer should operate around 98% efficient. Its true efficiency when feeding nonlinear loads is around 96.1. What this means is it should have around 2% losses. It actually has almost 4%. Double the amount of losses for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for the next 30 plus years. Now let's connect that same load to an HMT and see how the performance is different. You can see when we connect it to the secondary of the transformer, again the load is still operating the way it was designed. It's still consuming and drawing third harmonic, fifth harmonic, and etc. When we take measurements inside of the delta winding, again, this is on the primary side, look what does not jump over. We do not see large thirds and ninths and so on inside of the delta. If we don't see them in the delta, they can't leave the transformer. And if they're not in the primary of the transformer, they can't circulate and cause a lot of wasted heat. And what this allows the transformer to do is to return to its natural efficiency of around 98%. So to summarize the triplet harmonic treatment we've just discussed, we were able to see that triplins are in phase in all three phases. Because of this nature, because of them being in phase, they have a tendency to couple into the primary. And when they couple into the primary, delta winding causes a lot of additional heat, a lot of additional wasted kilowatt energy. This energy loss means a lot of additional wasted money for 24 hours a day for quite a long time. By changing the secondary winding on the HMT, triplins do not couple to the primary. Therefore, we do not have the additional energy, we don't have the additional wasted kilowatt energy, much cooler operation, much longer life of the HMT, and we'll have no additional losses or wasted money over the performance of the transformer.